Hey guys, it's good to see all of you here back again. And today we're doing something new. Um, from previous videos, you probably noticed that I talk a lot about a Docker. I love to use it. We've used it ourselves many times uh, for the Zabbix example. And previous video was how you can set up the Docker in a WSL2 environment on your Windows. But since we're talking a lot about uh, DevOps and all the common DevOps tools, what we did previously was basically reusing already defined containers that we can find in a Docker hub, like there is uh, official containers for the Zabbix, and you can find containers for all sort of different stuff and different applications that you might want to use. But today we are actually building our own container. So we are going to write our first Docker file, we will learn how we can build the container from this Docker file and also how to start it. And I will also try to comment on all of the lines that we write inside. But it's also important that I know that some of you maybe will be thinking like we should do something complicated and create some cool application or, or whatever, whatever. But I do think that it is important to start small. Like if we're building our first Docker container, it's definitely not a good time to build some complicated application. We need to start small just so that we do understand the framework, what containers actually are, how they work, how to write them, what is a Docker file. And then from that level, we can grow and challenge ourselves more and more and more and try to build more complex containers. So in a simple language, what actually is a Docker file? It's kind of the same script, right? But it's the script for the Docker, which contains text, which will be instructions that gonna tell Docker what exactly it needs to build, how it should be done, and what kind of operation should be done in between. Think of it as some example setup script, but we're not defining the script on our own physical computer. We're defining this setup environment setup script on microcomputer, which in this case is our little Docker container. And you might be asking, like, why should I even build my own Docker file if there are so many of them available publicly? You can go to the Docker Hub whenever you're looking for some interesting project in a GitHub. There's nowadays also very often, aside from the regular installation from the packages or compilation from the sources, is going to be an example how you can just spin this up from the Docker with one single command. And the beauty comes here with a customization. So whenever we're downloading and installing, running some predefined container, it's kind of like a basic image that applies for everyone, which means that it will not have any customizations. But when you're building your own Docker file, your own Docker container, you are able to define what kind of tweaks and customizations, maybe some configuration parameters that are necessary specifically for your um, set up for your environment going to be persistent in this container. Another example might be like if you wrote your own application, may it be some Python app or some Node app, uh, just a binary, and you don't want to run it like as a script, but you want to run it as a container, maybe because you plan to run it uh, in AWS or, or something, whatever. So this is another example where you can build from the script that you created your own Docker container. And another added benefit is the Docker Docker file guarantees that every time you start your container, it's going to be exactly the same environment. There are no chances to make some sort of mistake and mix up some parameters. The way you build it, the way you create a Docker file, it's always going to be executed exactly the same. And it's also very common to run uh, Docker containers and CI CD and DevOps pipelines. So there's definitely going to be a use for this knowledge. So let's jump into our WSL machine. I already have it open like we set it up in one of the previous videos. So basically, I just click open WSL, click on this little arrow and we have Alma Linux uh, 9 here. Docker is already installed. If you don't know how to set up the Docker on your WSL machine, there is a previous video about how you can do that. And uh, also don't forget that we did not add any systemd tools. So by default, um, on WSL, whenever you start a new session, all of the services, you need to start them one more time again manually. So what we need to do is systemctl start Docker just to make sure that our Docker service is running. And then uh, it's time to uh, define the structure of our container. So for that, I will create a new directory, call it, uh, how will we call it? Let's call it Docker file demo. So that's going to be a new directory. We can move to this directory then. 
and we will create a new file. Let's make so actually before we create, I need to explain what exactly we'll be creating. And for this simple example, as I previously said, we're going to go very simple. We're just going to run Nginx in a container and we're going to um, use some customized uh, index HTML page that we're going to show. So basically we're running the default Nginx container and we're going to show our own custom page that we're going to prepare. And whenever you are doing this, you have all the flexibility to change this, make some adjustments, create some more fancy page and so on and so on. So uh, we have a folder, Docker file demo. This is going to be the root directory of our project, of our Docker container. Then we can uh, create uh, Docker file. I will just create it empty for now so that it's here. And then we will also need to create this custom HTML page that we're going to use for our Nginx to actually serve. And that I will put in the directory HTML. So make there another HTML directory. We can go there. And here we can create this custom HTML file that we're going to show, which is going to be index.html. And there's no need, to, at least for this simple example, to go too fancy on setting up the web page. If you want, you can. You can download some examples from the web page, like it's not relevant at all at this, at this step. step. Yes. So what we're doing here is uh, we're just going to uh, provide some example, subscribe to my channel and check out Patreon link in the description, by the way, and close the tags H1. So this is going to be this example text that we will show in our Nginx container. So we can write quit to so save this file. We can double check index HTML. It's actually here. Uh, then what we do, we go one directory back here, we have our Docker file. So now it's time to actually fill it with some information. And inside the Docker file, we are defining what we're actually doing. So as I said, we're using Nginx as a base image. So Nginx is already created and available in the Docker hub. And as a base image, it is absolutely fine for us to use it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And to do that, we just define from Nginx and that's going to be built on the Alpine because that's the most lightweight uh, Linux distribution, right? So that's it's actually quite a common thing to use Alpine exactly with the Docker containers. Then what we are doing, like, as you know, whenever you install um, Nginx, there is this example page, web page, HTML page that is served, but we don't need it because we'll have our own. So what we're going to do is type uh, rm minus rf. So we're deleting this default Nginx HTML page, which is in the user share Nginx HTML and asterisk to delete everything inside that folder. Then we already prepared our index HTML, right? So we need to replace it. And which means that we need to copy it from HTML folder to user share Nginx and HTML. So we deleted the default one. Let me actually now I cannot zoom in. We deleted the default one from the Nginx container and we're replacing it with the one that we just created. Then we need to expose the port because well, or ports are not exposed by default. And uh, we're exposing the port 80 from our Docker container that we will later use so that we are able to access this container from our uh, browser. And then when everything is kind of ready, we have Nginx container, we created the index.html file, we moved over index.html file to um, Nginx uh, base HTML folder. And then it's also necessary to start the service itself. And to start it, we can type like this. So we are executing the CMD command. Uh, we are running Nginx. And then we are also providing some start parameters as uh, minus G. And we are running diamond uh, off like this. Uh, yes, that's basically it. This should be fine for us, uh, for our example Docker file. So feel free to save it. And when this is saved, like we have now uh, our project directory with a Docker file that we filled in with HTML directory with index.html page that we also filled in already. And you cannot just run this. You need to build container 
out of these contents. And to do that, again, make sure that your Docker service is running. And we're going to type Docker build minus T and uh, uh, what's going to be the name of uh, container. It's going to be Docker file uh, demo, right? And dot. So take all of the contents from this existing uh, directory, which is the Docker file demo where we created all of this. This is going to start a building process and uh, for a container this small and so little customizations, this is actually quick. So it's already done. And the next one, we're ready to actually start it. And to start it, you need to type Docker run minus D minus P. We are forwarding the port 8080 that we're going to use in our web browser. And it's going to be forwarded to port 80 in our container. And container is uh, not the Nginx, but uh, Docker file demo. So should be good like this. Docker run minus D minus P, 8080 to 80 Docker file demo. So click enter. Um, Docker file already running. Okay, so we had an issue here just because uh, before recording a video for you, I've tested all of this uh, myself. So as you can see, I still had a container up and running. So right now I just stopped it. And then we can try again to uh, docker run minus D minus P, same command that we did previously, click enter, and we can type docker ps, and we can see that the docker container is running right now. We can even check the logs of uh, this container, as we can see, Nginx is... So we can open our browser and just type in localhost, and remember we're using the port 8080, which is forwarding to the docker container 80 port. So localhost 8080, click enter, and there we go. Our first customized dockerized web page with the text, subscribe to my channel and check out Patreon link, which you can find in the description. So hope you learned something new. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you guys later.